Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you're having a great day. I had this idea to go through my collection and find one-off products, meaning products that are from brands and I have no other products at all from that brand. Like it's literally the singular item in my collection from that brand. And the kind of rules while I was looking through my collection were not only that I didn't have multiple uh, different types of products, but also I couldn't have multiple of the same product either. So let's say there was a brand I really like their lip glosses from, but all I owned were lip glosses and it was even the same exact formula of lip gloss if I had two of them like two different colors that didn't count because I have more than one I liked it enough to go back and I really wanted to single out the items that I only had one of and kind of talk about why how this thing came into my collection I thought it would be a fun way to talk about brands or products that maybe don't get a ton of love on my channel because usually if I love something a ton I probably have a lot of it um it also kind of singles out a lot of people PR because if I'm getting PR from brands, I'm usually getting more than one product. And I just thought it would be a fun way to kind of make a list, narrow some things down. I have enough products that I could definitely do a part two. So if you like this enough, um, I of course can do that for you guys later, but I have about 12 products here in front of me and I thought it'd be fun just to talk about them and how they came to be in my collection and what some of my thoughts are. And maybe if I have another product I'm looking at, what that might be in the future, if I'm gonna expand and uh, maybe buy another product from, the brand or whatnot. So let's just get into it. I hope you enjoy the video. First off, I want to talk about this cream product. This is the 123 Smile palette from the Cream Shop or the Creme Shop. And this is in the light shade. I think there is a darker set of these as well. These are creams and they are for contouring. I got this through BoxyCharm and I feel like subscription boxes are definitely a way that I can try products and end up having like only one of a brand in my collection. Anyway, this is a product I normally wouldn't look at because it's a brand I don't really know. Um, I tend to be a little wary of that. I, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just telling you what it is. But because I was in the market for a cream contour or bronzer type product, I was like, okay, let's give this a shot. And you know, the colors in here are quite cool toned and it's actually really great. I actually really enjoy it. So I swatched them out of order, unfortunately, but I tend to reach for actually this color here. It's the one that's in the center of the palette. And I find that it's just a nice one to give me some definition it's not too warm, but it also doesn't pull red on me, which I really like. Um, so it's actually been great. I also love the format of this where I can just like dip my sponge in. It's just such an easy way to apply my cream contour anyway. And I find a lot of the time if I'm having issues with product moving around as I'm blending things out and like kind of picking up underneath, if I go in with a sponge only, that really tends to help. So, so far I've been really enjoying it. The one thing I wish I could just get the compact, like a single compact of the cream I actually use the most and I would love that because you know I don't really use the other two colors and that's kind of sometimes the issue with palettes when they're complexion products or really anything you might not use all the products in there and that would also make it easier to like travel with but overall it's been a good experience I don't really have anything else from the brand on my list. This just happened to be a product that works for me because of where I was, what I was looking for for makeup at the time when this came into my life. So um, overall a win, but kind of an unexpected one. I was thinking about it also with this video. If there's anything from these brands that I'm mentioning that you think I should try, you think I would like, or some of your favorites, definitely leave your recommendations down below because obviously I've only tried one thing from the brand and I'd love to know any of your guys' thoughts. Okay, next. I I'll keep on kind of in a similar vein. This is a bronzer from Glowish, which is like an offshoot, I believe, of Huda Beauty, uh, but this is the only Glowish product that I have. It is a newer line, so I think that's one of the reasons I don't have more from it. They've come out with these bronzers, and then I think since then, I think they might have like a face powder, some blushes, maybe a glow product of some sort, but that's kind of it. Or a tinted moisturizer, maybe? I don't know, there's not a lot, is what I'm trying to get at. And so I definitely think that's part of the reason that I maybe don't have more. This is the Soft Radiance Bronzing Powder in the shade zero one light. I really loved the idea of this like marble finished bronzer. Um, I loved that it was going to give a kind of soft glow and not be completely matte. That's definitely a bronzer type that I've been enjoying recently. It's a very light swatch there. Let me see if I can build it up a little. So there's a swatch of it. I'm definitely still getting my thoughts on this product. I'm wearing it today over the cream product that I just talked about and I, I like it. I think it works okay. I'm just not in 
love with it. I'm not really in love with any bronzers in my collection. I don't hate this. I'll use this until something better comes into my life, but it's not one that I'm just like, going gaga over, you know what I mean? Like I thought I'd like it more than I actually do. The packaging I think is interesting. It's very thin, but it's like a two platform like square with a circle on top. It's just kind of interesting, I don't know. I feel like this kind of middle ground feeling on this product, it makes me feel like I'm kind of also in the middle with moving forward and purchasing another product. I thought the blushes that came out in a similar way were pretty and I felt like I'd have better success with them since, you know, a blush color is a little bit different than bronzer, I feel like. But I think that my lukewarm feelings on this definitely don't make me want to rush out and buy that, you know, like I'll wait for a sale or I'll, I don't know, I don't need to be first in line, I guess. So that is my only product from Glowish. I want to talk about a few of the palettes that I have that are just one-offs that I don't have anything else from because I thought that was interesting. I tend to purchase either multiple singles from a brand, so I tend to not have only one of a brand single shadows. Same with palettes. If I really like something, um, I tend to want to pick up the next launch or the next thing that kind of suits me. So there aren't a ton of like eyeshadow palettes in here. Anyway, this is from It's Bell. It's the Flare Collection. And this is a beautiful palette full of shimmery, like duochrome, different textured shadows. It is absolutely stunning. Definitely something that gets me excited about makeup is definitely my style. You guys, you guys know that. I will say opening this up, I kind of wondered, I haven't had this long at all, but the shade Rosewater already is starting to show that bit of uh, a ring around it, which I think is like some of the oils from the shadow seeping in. I've been noticing that that happens a lot. Um, I've had it happen with Odin's Eye. I've had it happen with my Shine by SD palette that's kind of similar to this. Um, and then I think even some of my Kaleido shadows. So not my favorite, but it seems to be <laughs> a trend. And uh, you know, I do love the shadows, so I, I don't know how that stops. Anyway, just Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I definitely wanna play around with this even more, but something I really love about this collection of shadows is that it really gets me inspired to do my like one shadow, super sparkly, shimmery looks. You guys know I love those, and I love that this offers different types of textures. Some of these shimmers are a little bit more satin duochrome, so they're not as sparkly. Some of them are even more flaky than others, and I just think that it's so fun that they went all the way out with just sparkles in their palette. I also felt like this was quite affordable, considering considering different indie brands and how much they can charge for these types of shadows, even if they're all in a palette and not buying singularly. Sometimes those palettes can be kind of uh, pricey, but this retails for 30 bucks, which I feel like is pretty reasonable considering. So I'm really happy with that. Definitely interested in buying more from the brand. I know this was their second palette launch. They had one that came out earlier than this, another like all shimmer, multi-chrome, like duochrome palette, really pretty. And I just didn't, get that one, but I had had my eye on it. So then once this one came out, I was like, okay, now it's my time to shine and grab this up. So um, yeah, really happy with that. Definitely on the lookout for more things from the brand and from my first purchase from them. I'm excited to see what else they come out with. The other eyeshadow palette I wanted to talk about in this video is from Beauty Bay. This is the Book of Magic palette. This came out last year around Halloween time and I picked mine up a little bit later in the season. First off, so pretty in packaging. This was definitely more of a impulse purchase because of price. I ended up getting this palette for like $7 on sale. Like I just couldn't say no. Once I open it up, you'll see why. So many people were talking about it. I just had to do it, but look at that. I just love the theming of it. Everything, everything just felt like, okay, you're making me impulse buy. This is the inside color story. Absolutely stunning. Um, the shadows in here are quite beautiful. I especially love the like shimmer formula. It reminds me of something similar to Glam Light in a way when it comes to the shimmers. Maybe a little less wet feeling, but some of these do perform almost like a cream. And then there's so many beautiful mattes in here as well. So you can't beat $7. You just, you can't, you can't beat it. <laughs> that's cheaper than drugstore, especially for how many shades are in here. So that's definitely the reason I purchased it. I've definitely been looking out for different Beauty Bay palettes as they've come out, but I think the reason I haven't purchased any of the other palettes that have come out, I know that the Wilderness palette got a lot of hype this year and sold out very fast. I think there's a new one called Opulence, and I think those palettes are beautiful, and I'm sure the quality is quite nice as well, but I think these are like a slippery slope palette for me where it's just like, at what point, 
do I stop buying the new ones? And I might like the color stories, but maybe I can dupe them out with what I have. Um, I think it's great that they're so affordable, but I just try not to get too sucked in. So this one sucked me in. And I think the only reason I even have it is because of that $7 price. And I happened to see it before it sold out. But if I hadn't seen that, if it had sold out before then, if it never went on sale, I probably wouldn't even have that palette in my collection. So I think that's why I haven't bought any more. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but that's the one Beauty Bay product that I have in my... Oh, I was just thinking, I did buy the pastel palette and I depotted them. So I technically have those. So this one's kind of a lie. I'm telling you, it was so hard going through my collection, trying to really, truly make sure. So, oh, I guess I had a bit of a cheat item, but um, I bought them at the same time. So there's that, which is another reason it's pretty hard to have one-offs in my collection because if I'm making an order or something like that, you tend to not just buy one item. Anyway, next I'm gonna keep talking about some cheek products. The first blush I wanna talk about is from Illamasqua. And this is one that if you've been with my channel a long time, you've probably seen me have for forever. I have had this in my collection for years now, probably going on like seven or even eight years. Like it's been a very long time. This is the blush in Lover. And I find that this is first off just such a unique color. It is a pastel, uh, peachy, orangey blush. And I find that the formula in this is just so nice. It never comes off like powdery. It always kind of sinks into the skin and becomes a part of it instead of like looking like it's sitting on top. It's such a smooth and beautiful formula. I'm very happy to have this in my collection. At the time when this is being talked about and really the reason I bought it, I do think Sephora maybe carried Illamasqua, but Sephora no longer does carry Illamasqua. And so this is just a brand that's a little bit harder to get a hold of, not impossible, but I feel like you kind of have to be wanting to buy this brand if you're inside the US you have to kind of seek out Illamasqua. And so I think for that reason, it's just not like as on my mind. And I kind of just feel satisfied with my one blush that I have. I don't feel the need to go check out other blushes from the brand. Maybe in the past I had, but obviously not enough to actually do it. I'm not really interested in like their eyeshadows or really any of the other products. And so this is the thing that stays. That's the, the one product in my collection and I feel pretty satisfied with it. The other blush I want to talk about is from Flower Beauty. I think this might be the only only Flower Beauty product I've even tried. With some of these, it might be the only thing in my collection currently, but I've tried other things and just like moved them out since. Um, but I think this might be like the one and only. <laughs> um, this is the Blush Balm and I picked up the shade Cinnamon and I picked this up after people had been raving about it for a very long time. It just felt like, okay, it's time to do it. This is very similar to me. Well, it's kind of like a mix between Glossier's Cloud Paints, I think they're called, and kind of something maybe a little bit more serum-y. I find this has a little less pigment and uh, can blend out a little more translucent if you want it to. And I really like it. I, I think the hype is real, or at least it's real to me. I don't feel the need to like pick up tons more. Maybe one other color would be nice. I picked up the shade that I thought I would use the most. And cinnamon is like this really beautiful, warm, kind of orangey, neutrally brown type shade. And I'm wearing it today. I'm wearing Illamasqua's blush over it, but I like the way this goes on. I don't find it picks up really my foundation, but it does give me this really youthful, like just fresh kind of almost dewy look to my cheeks. And I think this could be a really pretty product too. If you don't like the look of foundation, but you still want some blush, I think this would look so good over just skin. And I don't think that a lot about products, uh, but I think this one would look beautiful like that. So I'm really happy with this purchase. There are a few other things from Flower Beauty that are on my list that I wanna try. There's like that Jungle Lights palette, a few other things, but I just haven't bit the bullet and done it. So it's a brand that's definitely on my radar to check out more from. I have three highlighters to talk about. Um, I definitely think a way that I can get introduced to a brand for the first time could definitely be through a highlighter. Like that makes sense to my brain because I just love highlighters and it might be the thing that lets your brand in the door for me. <laughs> so first here, one of my really tried and true like favorite highlighters, this is from Nabla. And this is the skin glazing highlighter in the shade Ozone. I believe this is the last 
lightest shade, but it is a soft like champagne, but it does lean just slightly golden. Not a yellow gold though, which I really like. And I find this just looks so, so beautiful, dusted on my cheekbones. Um, I use a fan brush and it's just like exactly what I want in a highlighter. I'm so happy with this purchase. What made this come into my life was the 21 Days of Beauty. I got this half off. So I think it came out to like $12 instead of 25 or 24. And that was what got me. I was like, okay, I can do 12, let's try it out. And this definitely makes me wanna try the bronzers that are in this collection. I've always wanted to try a lot of Nabla stuff, but I think this might be the only thing I've ever actually tried. From them. Um, their eyeshadow palettes have always been like this far distant wish list type thing and I just haven't actually done it. So, so far the one and only Nabla product, such a star in my collection, something that I really covet and enjoy, but nothing else so far has made it in. Um, I think next though would probably be one of the bronzers. The other highlighters that I have are actually creams. This one's from Tokyo Milk, which is more well known as a brand that does perfumes. And this is from Margot Alina. And Margot Alina is who does Tokyo Milk and she has a lot of other brands as well, more perfumes and stationery and like there's fabric, like she does a lot. She even has like a subscription box that does quarterly. I've been semi tempted to try that. Anyway, I was able to get this product from Octoly and so that's the reason I only have the one. It was like for this one product, they sent it for review and that's it and I haven't tried anything else and I don't think there's that much makeup that Tokyo Milk even does. I've had this for quite a while. It looks like I've used a lot but unfortunately this has, I don't know, some of it's evaporated with time but the product's still like goo and great. This is one of my absolute favorite cream highlighters. The way that this looks on my skin is just so stunning. It's like a glazed look um, where it's super shiny, but it's not like sparkly. And then what's really cool about this is that it does actually dry down. Um, so it still keeps the look of like something wet, but I feel like if you're looking for wear time, if you're not wanting something sticky, it's gonna last and it's not gonna get everywhere. So I've really enjoyed this. Um, I love the packaging like everything about it's just such a nice product. I maybe should have kept like the little plastic thing on here so when I screwed it, it like stayed, but overall really happy with being able to try this product. And it's like this little treasure in my collection. I really like that one. I definitely think it'd be cool if they came out with even more makeup and kept on that like kind of dewy thing. I would love that. And last highlighter, this is from Fluid and this is the Elysium Universal Gloss. I am wearing this today and this is one of those highlighters that gives you like a wet look, but it is quite it's a little sticky in the balm, and this one is very shimmery. Um, it's beautiful. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Um, it is super beautiful. I highly suggest using this with your finger and blending it in that way. If not, you're going to be left with the sparkle, but not really the like gloss matrix that the sparkles in and I feel like it's just a different look. I don't like that as much. I really like it, how it looks warmed up with your finger, just taking a little bit and pressing it on. It really is going to give you that like wet shiny look. I find with products like this and I think it's very similar to Seismic from ColourPop so if you like that this might be something you like. Although this does stay slightly tacky, not in a heavy way, not in a way where your like hair is going to stick to it necessarily but just something to consider the difference between that and the ColourPop. Anyway, I find with these products that are very sparkly and give you that wet look that they look great from far away or even on camera like this. And I love that, but up close, you are seeing sparkle on your skin. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> it's definitely sparkly. This I got in like a gift bag, like a goodie bag. And so that's why I have it. It's definitely really pretty, definitely a unique product in my collection because of its formula. And I do think it's like a great one. It just reminds me of like editorial. Like that's what this is, you know? And I'm not doing editorial all the time. I feel like if I did more Instagram looks, this would look so good. Like it would look amazing. Um, so I like the product. I wouldn't be against like looking into more from the brand, but at the moment I just, you know, am happy with the one. Okay, I think we have 
have three more products to talk about. Um, I have two different eyeliners here. And first one, this is such a mainstream brand and it's like the only thing I have. This is from Milani and it is a gold eyeliner. I keep this in my collection because I don't have anything like yellow gold like this. And I don't use a ton of like liquid liners, but I do enjoy having a quite a large collection of colorful uh, like pencil eyeliners to enhance looks and whatnot. So I kept this around even though I don't use it all the time just for those what ifs and I feel like it doesn't take up a lot of space. This was gifted to me by a friend. So it's just been like sitting in there. It hangs out of my collection. Doesn't get that much use. I don't know why I don't have a lot of Milani products. It's definitely a brand that I would be interested in trying more from. I know in the past I've really enjoyed their blushes, um, but at the moment, <laughs> this is all I got from them. <laughs> Next is a really affordable brand. This is Nika K's Eyeliner in Inchworm. This is a beautiful, beautiful liner. I know at one point you could get these for like a dollar each, and I just feel like a dollar for this beautiful chartreuse green eyeliner is such a Steel. I've had other products in the past from Nika K, um, but right now this is all that's left and I will keep this probably until like it's like very off or something weird happens because I use this all the time. I use this liner all of the time. So affordable, so good. Just really, really good. I've had past eyeliners as well, like a blue one and those just this one, this is the special one, man, from the line. This is their hero product for sure. I freaking love it. And if you're looking for something like this, I mean, you just can't go wrong with the price. I think you can get it off of Amazon for a little bit more, but I think when I bought this initially, I got it for like a dollar. Such a good dollar spent. The last one-off product in my collection I'm gonna talk about today, this is from Mecca Cosmetica. And I picked this up when I was in Australia a couple years ago now, so it's definitely getting old. Let me clean this thing up. I can't remember if I was actually with Melissa Gold when we went shopping there, or if that was a different time and I got this after, but I'll leave her channel link down below if you don't know Melissa. She's awesome, definitely go check her out. But this is just a tinted lip balm. I wanted to pick up something while I was in Australia, I went shopping at uh, Mecca, hence why this is from Mecca Cosmetica. And it was really fun, but I, I just realized I get so overwhelmed when I'm shopping in store, especially like a new store. Um, I definitely prefer online shopping usually, unless I'm just going to browse. Like of course browsing is fun, but I'm never gonna splurge in store as much as I would online, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I picked this up because I felt like it was going to be really easy to wear, natural, and it wouldn't be like a waste essentially because I could use it a lot and it's nice. I think it's a nice product, but it is still like a lip product. So of course it's kind of hard for me to use, but it's beautiful. The packaging on this is super nice. It's heavy and weighted. It has like the magnet closure on it. Um, so yeah, just a nice little pick up. I had to pick up something from Mecca. You know, I had to. And those are my one-off products I wanted to talk about. I'd love to know, do you own anything from these brands? What are your favorite items? What do you suggest I maybe look into a little bit more? Also, again, if you do want to see a part two to this, definitely let me know because I have quite a few other products. It might change and shift by the time I film the second part, but let me know. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you're having an amazing day. And other than that, I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.